Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, <coughs> speaking practices that people might do uh, in language exchanges and generally just how people learn naturally a uh, new language. So um, we're going to review the interlocutor, interlocutor effect, the interaction effect, the communicative, communicative approach and the comprehension approach. Um, <coughs> so the speaking practice is um, when you have, um, you, you plan to learn a new language, uh, the best thing you can do is uh, find uh, peers with which you can speak. The problem is um, not everybody can teach you or you know, not everybody can have a conversation because the people you have to find as peers have to well have patience and also speak the language you're interested in and also be interested in the language um, that you know very well, perhaps your native language. So um, it's called language exchange and there are applications, programs on the computer that you can download and from there you can find these kind of people and it matches the languages, the native languages so that they can have natural conversation. So you uh, switch between one language and the other to have a fair amount of time, and basically half and half. But it depends on how many people participate also. Maybe there are three languages and there is an exchange of three people. However, the majority of language exchanges happen between two people of native uh, level of speaking. So the interlocutor effect uh, is the effect that happens when people talk to uh, someone else with different um, mood states. Uh, different personalities and um, different expressions that are allowed uh, according to taboos in society and status, uh, age, um, and all sorts of roles that people play in society. So the interlocutor effect affects how people uh, use language uh, depending on the person they are talking to. So for example, in Japanese there are honorifics. Okay, so the honorific of a uh, king is sama, the honorific of a uh, person uh, of normal status is san, and the honorific of young people is chan. So this is just an example of how language changes according to the person you're talking to, status, um, in Spanish, um, the way the tone of the voice you talk to might indicate you're talking to your mother uh, as opposed to talking to your friend. Okay. Then you have the uh, interaction effect, that is, uh, the way in which people talk is not like written language. It can, you can interrupt another person and uh, comment about what they're talking. Um, you can um, make mistakes in the process by simply forgetting what you were saying because the person reacted with a grimace or a weird expression and maybe you reacted to that yourself and uh, that gives another kind of reaction to the other person so it's a cycle um, it can also mean people you know um, being interrupted by a car passing by or by somebody yelling or another person joining another person joining the conversation so that's the interaction effect it's the uh, um, it's what makes speaking much more difficult than writing because in writing you have time to express yourself in interaction in the interaction effect of speaking you have uh, all sorts of things you uh, perhaps didn't expect while you were talking and you have to deal with them in real time so the communicative approach uh, is uh, the way that uh, most te modern teachers should uh, teach i don't know if this is the way that most of them do it unfortunately some of are stuck in the uh, uh, writing um, translation approach um, but in the communicative approach uh, there's language exchanges what i said you can now with the internet you can search for these people you know say if you want to learn uh i don't know kazakistani i don't know if that's a language <laughs> Uh, you, you can find people you know, that are interested in perhaps learning English and you can stalk, uh, talk to them, not stalk, talk to them in, um, 
in their um, in their language when it's your turn and when it's their turn they can talk in English and exchange ideas so just have a normal conversation with a person you just met this is uh, the most natural way and it's um, it's the way that schools should be doing it and the problem is always uh, you know in schools there are a lot of people of the same language that speak the same language um, with a teacher that speaks the target language and also teaches it so uh, it's like an a, an asymmetry between the students and the teacher so there cannot be a one-to-one -one conversation in that case because one teacher with 10 or 20 or who knows how many students in a classroom so it's better to do it one-on-one -on -one. you know language exchanges one-on-one -on -one. and uh, now with the internet you can find these kind of people with and just by searching language exchange programs on your favorite uh, web browser your favorite search engine Commercial interaction, so if you're already advanced or perhaps um, immediate in, uh, advanced, you can um, start working with people that speak that language and get getting better to, to even higher levels, and perhaps even native. Um, of course, getting jobs and um, using the target language. Elimination of impatience, that is, of course, um, finding people that are patient and not everybody's patient, so this is another... Um, you know, hindrance for learning languages is that people give up when they find people that don't have patience with them, and you know that's just uh, the way things are. You, you know, sometimes sometimes it's just about luck to find people that are patient with you, and that also speak your the tar the target language you're aiming at. Better for everyday language fluency. Okay, so when you use the communicative approach, um, you use the interlocutor interlocutor effect and the um, interaction effect uh, every time you speak with another person so um, it, uh, it makes you better at uh, natural communication so it's uh, probably the most the highest level you can reach um, uh, I mean through the communicative approach you can reach the highest levels of fluency because it's the most natural way that people have been done they're doing it for hundred uh ten of tens of thousands of years like probably the first human was i mean anatomically appeared at least in fossil fuels uh, fossil um, evidence a uh, hundred thousand years ago in the east of africa so uh, there has been a lot of time for this uh for this skill to develop uh, within humans and within human societies, and then um, comprehension approach is um, is probably the second best. Although you know, along with a communicative approach, um, it, it's uh, a winning situation regardless of um, even I would say the the talent of the person for learning languages. If you follow very well these two approaches. It's almost sure uh, sooner or later you will learn your target language. So, comprehension approach inclu includes self guided practice. And now, with the internet again, you can find a lot of content on the internet. It has to be comprehensible. So, that means that it has to be at the level that you can understand and trying to um, consult uh, references like dictionaries and phrasal dictionaries the least you can if you're consulting them too much like say there are 10 words in a paragraph that you don't understand probably it's too advanced for you and nowadays you know especially in the macro languages you know chinese russian you know these big languages because the countries that speak it are big and have a lot of uh, native speakers probably have their own website you know the, the government supports this website so that they have uh, f so they can offer free content for uh, beginners intermediate and advanced learners mm, just as an example Deutsche Welle offers um, uh, German content for uh, for all levels um, NH NHK of Japan offers um, easy under uh, easily understandable um, news uh, Al Jazeera offers uh, Arabic courses you know modern standard Arabic courses and so on uh, multiple so multiple source consulting um, so not only um, you can consult um, visual aids like um, perhaps um, graphic novels or comics or 
uh, even you know movies but you can also find very useful um, uh, reading uh, materials with also the audio you just have to have a little bit of patience to find it but uh, sooner or later you will find them uh, reading with audio that's probably the best method you know you can buy audiobooks but there are also um, a lot of um, um, dedicated companies that produce you know learning materials for foreigners and then there are graded readers which are probably the best also and then it has rela it is rela related to the audiobooks but sometimes they are not they don't include the audio so uh, you can only read them but the good thing is that it is adequate for different levels so for example uh, novices uh, then they call it beginners, I suppose, and intermediate, um, beginner, intermediate, 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 advanced, advanced, and so on. And so maybe you can divide them depending on the editors. They can divide it into who knows how many levels, how many grades, perhaps 11, 12, 20, depends on their standard. And there, uh, and then we have information overload. So maybe it's too much information when it gets um, too complicated. Maybe the topics you're not interested, you try to avoid, and that's perfectly okay. Just search for the topics you're interested in. Obviously, every person has different interests, so it depends on the person, the individual, to find the adequate uh, contents. But now with search engines, this is much easier. Um, and of course, the comprehension approach compared to the, co the communicative approach is better for deep meaning. So you can learn technical stuff, you can learn um, philosophical stuff, and uh, perhaps just learn new things, mm, like difficult topics like science and uh, art uh, or artistic techniques and uh, history and so on and so on, just um, from reading uh, meaningful. Uh, uh, deep topics that you have always been interested in and of course this is difficult because this is a more advanced stage but once you reach it you can um, switch from one language to the other and see that you might even find very different contents especially in history uh, because you know they say that uh, history is written by the winners of wars and things like that and it's true, and um, a lot of it uh, has to do with, especially history of uh, identities and you know politics. Uh, this might be completely different if you read it from one language as opposed to the other. Okay, so uh, that's all. Thanks for listening.